Das ist so. Und er, er will gewinnen, er will das Beste aus den Spielern rausholen. Ab und zu. Vielleicht äh, ist es ein bisschen too much. Aber äh, wir sind alle Profi und können mit dem umgehen. Wer war das früher, Guido Lindemann? Lasse Lilia war auch ein grosser Trainer, als er Meister geworden ist. Äh, hat man sich da überhaupt darum gekümmert, was der Trainer macht, wie man das heute beobachtet? Ja, ich muss schon sagen, er war natürlich ganz ein harter Trainer. Gewesen. Er hat das sehr wahrscheinlich auch ziemlich in die Schweiz reingebracht. Und die, die er dann nicht mögen hat, die hätte er wirklich nicht mögen, auf denen hat er rumgepickelt. Aber ich hatte es also sehr gut gehabt mit ihm und mit ihm haben wir Erfolg gehabt. Ist es äh, früher härter gewesen als äh, die verwöhnte heutige Generation? Nein, ich denke, es ist zu seiner Zeit genau gleich gewesen für Morty. Äh, er war sicher sehr, sehr hart, gewesen, hat viel verlangt und äh, ganz harte Training haben wir gehabt, aber das war super. Gewesen. Weißt du das, wenn man so verschiedene Trainer hat, wie jetzt eben der Dag Schäden oder jetzt äh, ein Seeler, der ja ein anderer Typ ist, wie kann man sich immer wieder an die Trainer adaptieren? Da hat man gar keine Wahl, man hat es funktionieren. Das ist so, äh, eben, da kann man nichts groß machen, man muss miteinander schaffen, man hat alle das gleiche Ziel, man will gewinnen und von dem her, äh, ja, sie sind sicher sehr unterschiedlich, aber jeder hat seine guten Sachen auch. Lugano hat ein bisschen Probleme mit der bisherigen Saison. Er hat ein paar Mal gegen die Mannschaft gespielt. Was klappt da noch nicht? Was eigentlich selten klappt bei dem Kader, den die haben? Wir haben sicher eine top Mannschaft. Ich denke, sie hatten ein bisschen Probleme mit Verletzungen. Da haben sicher wichtige Spieler gefehlt. Und jetzt, wenn die ein bisschen retour kommen, kommen sie dann vielleicht auch wieder besser raus aus dieser kleinen Krise, die sie hatten. Was erwartet der Guido Lindemann von den Luganesi, die nicht so im Strumpf sind in der Meisterschaft gegen das Team ist die Katharinenburg bitte? Ja gut, also ich hoffe schwer, dass natürlich Lugano gewinnt. Wir haben ja letztes Jahr auch gezeigt im Finale, sind sehr gut gewesen bis dorthin. Und ich denke, vielleicht dort es einen Kick zusammengeben zu der Mannschaft wieder und vielleicht können sie wieder ein bisschen ab sein. Wir können Schweizer Mannschaften gegen solche Teams spielen und gewinnen, das ist möglich. Zu allen Zeiten vor 30 Jahren, da sind draussen Meilen weiter weg gewesen. Ja, ich mag mich noch erinnern, wir waren immer in Ostberlin. Wir ähm, äh, haben wir ein Turnier, ein Sommerturnier. Und da ist zum Beispiel ein Fetisop, hat man gegen ihn gespielt. Der hat mit dem Stock einem aufgelöst. Der hat so Kraft gehabt, der hat einem aufgelöst. Und die sind natürlich schon Meilen äh, weiter weg von uns. Das hat sich zum Glück für die Schweizer Eishockey ein bisschen verändert. Wir merken so, der Guido Lindemann hat ganz viele Geschichten, wo er zu erzählen hat. Das macht er heute am Nachmittag und am Abend zusammen mit seinem Sohn Sven Lindemann. Die beiden sind Gäste heute am ersten spengler cup tag für Jungen in Davos. Und jetzt haben wir gesehen, das Licht ist erlöscht. Das ist genau der richtige Zeitpunkt für zum Claude Jacki zu schalten. Es geht nämlich los mit der offiziellen Eröffnungsfeier des spengler cup 2016. Ja, der 90. Spengler Cup, das will natürlich gefeiert werden und es ist alles bereit in der Eishalle für diese Eröffnungsfeier. Ein spezieller Moment auch für den neuen OK-Präsidenten des Spengler Cups, Marc Cianola, der ehemalige HCD-Captain, hat in diesem Jahr jetzt definitiv das Zepter übernommen von Freddy Parchezzi und... Zum ersten Mal ist Mark Cianola also alleiniger Boss am Spengler Cup. Die beiden Herren, die sich aufgestellt haben im Mittelkreis, das sind zwei norddeutsche Musiker, Mozart Heroes. Die beiden Musiker Chris und Phil werden uns in den nächsten zehn Minuten hier unterhalten.
Klassisch bis Rockig. Die beiden haben alles im Repertoire. Weiter geht's mit Klängen von Vangelis. Teilnehmenden Teams zu klängen von John Bon Jovi. Jedes Team vertreten mit seiner Flagge. Heroes, Chris und Phil. Musikalisch, so finde ich zumindest, ist der Auftakt gelungen. Spengler Cup, Sprecher George Schlüchinger. Begrüßt alle Teams, die vertreten werden durch HCD Junioren. Das Team Kanada. Dann Dynamo Minsk aus Weißrussland bisher einmal dabei und gleich gewonnen. Benvenuto, HC Lugano. Der HC Lugano, letztes Jahr erst im Finale, am Team Kanada gescheitert, bestreitet wie vor einem Jahr heute das Eröffnungsspiel. Und Automobilist Jekaterinburg heißt der Gegner. Die beiden Teams letztes Jahr im Halbfinale bereits aufeinander getroffen. Dann das neue Team, Mountfield HK, das tschechische Team, das ja die Lizenz von Budovice übernommen hatte vor zwei Jahren. Herzlich willkommen, HC Und natürlich der HC Davos, der dann morgen Abend zum ersten Mal im Einsatz stehen wird. Es ist angerichtet, meine Damen und Herren. Das heißt, wir dürfen das Jubiläumsturnier offiziell eröffnen. Und diese Ehre geht an den neuen Präsidenten des Organisationskomitees. Please welcome. Da ist er, der neue OK-Präsident Mark Cianola, begleitet von Maskottchen Hitch. Er wird jetzt in den nächsten Augenblicken den 90. Spengler Cup offiziell eröffnen.
Herzlich willkommen, liebe Spengel Cup Gäste, Partner, Teams, Helfer und alle, die zur, zur Spengler Cup Familie gehören. 359 Tage ist es her, als wir das Team Kanada mit einem Sieg aus dem Turnier 2015 entlassen haben. Heute, knapp ein Jahr später, stellen wir die Wettkampfuhren wieder auf Null und suchen den Spengler Cup Sieger 2016. Wir vom Organisationskomitee und der Hockeyclub Davos wünschen allen einen erfolgreichen, emotionalen, spannenden und unfallfreien Spengler Cup. Und mit dieser symbolischen Pöck-Übergabe erkläre ich den Spengler Cup 2016 als eröffnet. Vielen Dank. Höck-Übergabe an einen der vier Schiedsrichter im heutigen Spiel. Und da haben wir Freddy Bargetzi, der aber auch in diesem Jahr mitgearbeitet hat mit Marc Cianola, um diesen Spengler Cup wieder auf die Beine zu stellen, um die Teams einladen zu können. Die beiden sind viel gereist, waren gemeinsam im Ausland unterwegs. Und jetzt ist also alles bereit für die 90. Ausgabe. Hitch ist bereit. Die beiden Teams, die das Eröffnungsspiel heute bestreiten, sind bereit. Der HC Lugano und Automobilist Jekaterinburg. Linus Klaassen, Topscorer am Spengler Cup 2015. Einer der Stars, die heute Nachmittag einlaufen. Beide Teams mit Sorgen in der Meisterschaft. Die Geschichte des HC Luganos und seines Coaches Doug Schäden, die kennen Sie. Nach vier Siegen in Serie vor der Nationalmannschaftspause. Jetzt wieder drei Niederlagen in Serie, nur knapp über dem Strich. Bei Ekaterinburg, da ging der Saisonstart völlig in die Hose und man hat dann den Trainer ausgewechselt. André Rasin, der impulsive Wüterich an der Bande, ist weg. Und er ist ersetzt worden durch einen Veteranen, Wladimir Krikunov, der Mann mit am meisten Coaching-Erfahrung in der KHL. Der 66-Jährige hat im November übernommen. Im letzten Jahr im Halbfinale gewann der HC Lugano 3 zu 0. Dank einer taktischen Meisterleistung, dank einem starken Elvis Merzlikins im Tor, kann Jekaterinburg heute Revanche nehmen für diese Niederlage. Das Team hat sich inzwischen gefangen und ist im Aufwärtstrend in der Continental Hockey League. Ja, Elvis Merzlikins, von ihm wird einiges abhangen heute im Tor des HC Lugano. Das sind die Schiedsrichter. Ausgerüstet mit Mikrofonen, damit wir hören, was hier gesprochen wird. Stefan von Selius aus Turku in Finnland zum ersten Mal am Spenglerköp. Ein erfahrener Mann in Vancouver, da hat er damals noch als Linesman den Final Kanada-USA geleitet. Er ein neues Gesicht, die anderen vier, die kennen wir. Tobias Sverli, 39-jährig, der St. Galler, der die zwei letzten WM-Finals arbitriert hatte mit Balas Kovac und David Obwegeser. Die beiden Zürcher Linesmänner, das sind die vier, die dieses Spiel leiten werden. Und hier Wladimir Krikunov zurückgeholt aus dem Ruhestand, nachdem also Rasin ist entlassen worden. Und er hat, ich habe es gesagt, die Mannschaft zurückgeführt auf die Erfolgsstraße. Im Moment ist man zwar immer noch unter dem Playoff-Strich in der Ostgruppe der KL auf Rang 10, aber man hat zum Schluss sehr erfolgreich gespielt. Drei Siege aus den letzten vier Spielen. Im Gegensatz zu Dachschädens Team, 
das seine drei letzten Spiele gegen Biel, gegen Lausanne und Zürich verloren hat. Automobilist Jekaterinburg in Weiß gegen Lugano in Schwarz. Das Eröffnungsspiel des 90. Spengler Cups. Zakrin Zun gewinnt das erste Bulli für Lugano. Dann Hoffmann. Erster Scheibenkontakt für den Guli bei Ekaterinburg. Ivan Lissutin, das er heute spielt, ist eine Überraschung. Eigentlich nominell die Nummer 3 im Team. Wir kommen später noch im Detail darauf zurück. Lugano in diesem Jahr mit einigen abwesenden verletzten Spielen, dafür mit drei Verstärkungsspielen. Und Patrick Zakrinson, der Schwede, mit dem ersten Abschluss in diesem Spiel. Allerdings zu wenig genau hat er diese Scheibe aufs Tor gebracht. Fliegender Wechsel bei beiden Teams. Und dann der Fehler im russischen Teams. Abschlussversuch von Raffaele Sanitz, dem Udluganesi. Doch auch dieser Versuch geht neben dem russischen Tor vorbei. Maschow mit dem ersten Angriff für die Russen, abgefangen von Merz Likins. Eising ist angezeigt und wird auch ausgesprochen. Also erster unerlaubter Befreiungsschlag und damit Eingabe der Scheibe vor Merz Likins. Dankeschön. Wir haben es gehört, zum achten Mal in Serie dabei. Wie immer also mit der traditionellen Bratwurst, die er gegessen hat vor dem Spiel. Der Spengler Cup für den HC Lugano eine Gelegenheit wie letztes Jahr. Sich wieder zu finden innerhalb des Teams, wieder eine homogene Mannschaft zu werden. Sanitz wieder, suchte Lapier, Lapier. Neu dabei am Spengler Cup, kam ja erst nach dem Spengler Cup zum HC Lugano, der Kanadier in der letzten Saison. Dann Abschlussversuch von Timaschow. Rokticar, der Slowene, ist nicht mehr rangekommen an den Rebound und es gibt das nächste Eis. Schuss von Maxim Lapierre. Wir kennen ihn seit den letzten Playoffs als Provokateur, als Krieger auf dem Eis. Ob der Spengler Cup die richtige Plattform ist für ihn, wir werden es sehen. Minus Glasen im Moment ohne Anspielstation. Vorchecking von Golischew. Jetzt kann sich Lugano lösen. Scheibe für Glasen wieder. Aber gut gelöst von Igor Schuravilov. Wissen die sehr diszipliniert stehen im Moment, versuchen keine Risiken einzugehen. Sind allerdings in diesen ersten Minuten mehr defensiv in Schwierigkeiten gekommen, als ihnen lieb wäre. Auch hier wieder ein Pass, der nicht richtig abgegeben werden konnte. Aber Lugano ist am Wechsel. Kennt Versuch von Alexei Michnov, der hier als Captain nominiert worden ist am Spengler Cup. Nächster Versuch, wieder Michnov. In der blauen Linie Kokal, der Captain. Der eigentliche Captain in der KHL. Michnov jetzt an der Scheibe, also Captain der Mannschaft am Spengler Cup. 
Thornton kann befreien für Lugano. Bögler mit gutem Vorchecking und einer der Verstärkungsspieler hat abgedrückt. Wisniewski, James Wisniewski, der Amerikaner aus der NHL. Jetzt wieder an der Scheibe, hat in der letzten Saison einen Kreuzbandriss und darum ist er... Tries to get it up there, number 15, Gregory Hoffman, drafted by Carolina back in 2011. He's in on an offensive check. In there is Rock Takar, the 27-year-old, who had 14 goals last year overseas. Spinning and firing that puck is Hoffman, goes off a skate. Shot by Wisniewski in front of the net. Oh, my goodness. How did Dario Bergler not put that one in? He was all alone in front of the net, and Dario Bergler was robbed by a skater, a glove. We'll have to take another look. 14 goals and 25 points. We know he can put the puck in the net, and but the not fans here. like this, when you see the shot coming in from Wisniewski, Burger was in perfect position. The rebound came right out to you. You're going to see Burger right here at 87 in black, but it just came off. Watch this. Off his shin pad, unable to corral it on his blade, and the puck went squirting by Lazutin, who has been excellent here in the first five minutes in the Ekaterinburg goal. His 11th year in the Swiss League. Back-to-back 20-goal -back seasons with Davos back in 2012 and 2013. He never got any compass in on that one. Best scoring chance of the game as Max Lapierre carries it out two-on-two and two over the line. Lapierre in front of the net looking for a deflection in front. That looked like Sanitz, but he couldn't get a stick on it as it comes back to Philip Fuhr. In his own zone, rink wide to Alexandro Schiza. Gets it up looking for Lapierre. Broken up temporarily. Chassalin corrals it, gets it to the near side. Looking for Dimitri Monia. Monia now draws a penalty, gets it out in front of the net. Back to the point. Zeravliov waiting, lets it go through a screen. And I think it hit a body in front, might have hit Monia, who's drawn the penalty. Power play for Yakaterinburg is coming up. Monia towards the net, looking for a high deflection there by Pavel Turbin. Couldn't get a stick on that one. There's a shot. Nice save by Merzlikens as he got a left arm on that one. Puck is finally touched. And we'll get our first power play of the game. Looks like it will be a hooking call against Lugano. It is. It's going to be number seven for the assistant captain, the longtime member of the Swiss national team. A little loose down here. You see Monia coming in, driving a little look. You get the stick. Rode up on his arm. Monia using that left arm to shield himself. And that stick rode up. Mona stick got a little bit careless with that. Rode up, and he's going to go off for the high stick. And here it is again. He got leverage on right here. Drove low. Got the legs in a good squatting position. And Ford's got to be a little bit more controlled with his stick right there. Now, Ekaterinburg going on this afternoon's first power play. 31 years of age, Philip Fuhr. He was drafted by the Rangers in 2003. Never played. Has spent his entire career overseas. Behind the net for James Wisniewski. Banks it out to center ice. Ekaterinburg brings it back in. To Carr, back to the point. Shot pad save as that one whistled there by Kakowski. Mikhail Kakowski. The big Czech defenseman played in the OHL with Kingston and Ottawa going back to 2011-2013. Nice little move there by Rock Takar to start things out. Here's Simakov in over the line, attacking the triangle. Leaves it nicely there for Stanislav Chistov. Remember him, the former Anaheim Duck, fifth overall, yeah. Doug, in 2005. Chistov. Gets it into Kukal, and that play was broken up, comes out yeah. to center. And speaking of Chistov, I've seen him in the tournament with a couple of different teams. He's so skillful, but just never been able to really package it all together. The big defenseman, 6'2", 2'12", Dmitry Megalinsky starting out. Gets it over to Alex Mikanov, far side. Mikanov, who's had a lot of puck time so far, has it broken up. Oh, and a great opportunity for a breakaway was Max Lapierre, but they never could get him the puck. Ryan Wilson shoots yeah. it to center ice with Lapierre. Almost sprung there, shorthanded. Here's Kukal looking for Mikanov. Nice defensive play. I think that was Rule who got a stick on that, that was one. Sanis together out. by Lapierre. The first unit on the Lugano's penalty kill. Excellent. Did a really nice job last year in the playoffs for Lugano. Carried it over this season. Lapierre obviously made his bones in the National Hockey League as a defensive centerman. Garayev, nice piece of stick work to bring the puck in over the line. Corralled by Wilson. He tries to get it in, doesn't uh, work. 
Ten seconds left in the minor penalty. Nothing mounting on the power play. Yeah, good job of penalty killing by Lugana, but Wilson doing a nice job in his own zone. Got the puck, but there's the situation over the red line. You want to be able to get that puck deep and allow your, yourselves to get a line change. Guys were out there for about close to a minute on that penalty kill. First penalty of the game to Philip Fuhrer is over. Puck is brought back in the other way. Great opportunity once again by Dimitri Monia. He drew the penalty, yeah. got an opportunity right there. 12, 34 to go, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, classic Russian, left-handed shot coming off the right wing. We love to see Russians. It's a traditional part of their game, playing on the off wing like that. But one thing, if you're a Lugano fan this afternoon, you're impressed by the way Merzlikens has started this game. Really sound, really poised and calm. Looks like the Merzlikens that we saw who played so well in last year's tournament. Oleg Gubin on the faceoff, 35-year-old veteran of the KHL is spinning and firing that puck was Jan Buchtel. First year in the KHL. Out of the Czech Republic yeah. shot, hit a skate and went into the netting. Yeah, four import players, so-called import players on this year, Katerinburg. Three Czechs and a Slovak. Guys that are used to coming over into that league, Steve, acclimatize them very well. There's close to 40 Czech players play, currently playing in the KHL. We see Anatoly Goloshev on here with Gubin and Buktel trying to get Goloshev going. We talked about it in the yeah. opening. He was on fire last year. He's not the same player. Yeah, and as you said, rightfully so, playing him with Czech forwards had such good success last year. The national team sent him in Andre Roman and has not found the success this year. You noted in the opening, 25 goals last year in the KHL, which is an exceptional number, but is really slumped this year with only four at the midway mark of the season. Fourth round pick of the New York yeah. Islanders. Working for the Islanders last year, George McPhee. George McPhee was here last year. I'll yeah. let you connect the dots, Doug. Well, it's obvious, right? He was, as you said, he's scouting for the Islanders. Saw Goloshev up close and personal. Had a fantastic term, and hence, the Islanders selected him in the fourth round. We approach the eight-minute mark of this period number one of the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup. Class and back to the point. There's a shot by Fuhrer. Didn't make its way to the net. Picked off by Alexei Vasilevsky. Gets it out towards center, looking for Rock to Car. It was too far. And it's brought back the other way by Klassen. In over the line. Klassen cuts to the middle. Waiting. Let's a shot go. Blocked in front by Simikov. And back comes Yakaterinberg with numbers. But it was the end of a shift. So just dumping the puck in was Mikhail Kukovsky. And wholesale changes from Yakaterinburg. And a classic example of the way the Russians play really passive defensively. You notice no forechecking at all. As soon as that puck is lost, they sprint right back and they're basically in a 3-2. Massimo Ronchetti gets it up to center and here comes Lugano on the rush. Stepping on the puck there momentarily was Julian Walker and back comes Kukal the other way. Kukal, Garayev lets it go. Blocked in front of the net. Ron Chetty getting a shin pad on that one. Here's Mikanov, who's had a lot of puck time so far. And back the other way comes Gregory Hoffman. Three on three. Hoffman waiting. Cocked and ready for that one was Zacherson. Oh. He wanted the puck, didn't get it. There's a shot that whistles wide of the near side. Penalty coming up on the play to Yakaterinburg as Ryan Wilson has the puck. Gets it back to Zacherson. Into Wilson, near corner. Back behind the net for Klassen. Setting up shot far side. Delayed penalty coming up as Wisniewski has it. Plays it back to Klassen, wow. who just gives it away to Kukal. Power play, Lugano. But uh, a little... You're watching the 2016 Spengler Cup. We'll be back. I can hear you now. I know. Play just underway, scores! James Wisniewski lets it go from the point on the power play. One to nothing, Lugano, just like that. Right off the face of an excellent job. The puck, the key on the face of right here. You can see it come back. Burglar back to Wisniewski. We mentioned him in the opening. What is he going to do? He's going to anchor Lugano's first unit power play. Excellent shot from the blue line. Scored a number of goals in the National Hockey League from shots like that in the blue line. A nice job 
Doug Shedden looking very smart, bringing him in here. James Winooski at the last minute and immediately contributing, putting Lugano ahead 1-0. Ivan Lesutin, who's only played one game for Yekaterinburg in the regular season. Could that puck have been touched by number nine, Tony Martinson, who's in front of the net? That's the Certainly first right, thing I nice, think about yeah, now. Nice interference, Steve. Great point. I didn't think it touched it, but an excellent job of putting a body in front of the Zutin and then the puck coming back to Wisniewski, who we all know has a big slap shot from the blue line. Jan Buktel with the puck now. Leaves it there for Zeravliov. Comes back to the point, and it's oh. just out over the line, hopping over Rock to Car's stick. Officially, the goal has been given to James Wisniewski, so welcome back with a shot like that, which you'd wonder, as a early 30s defenseman, if he could produce at another level in the future, my friend. Well, the beauty of that goal is, right, you talked about him, played one shift last year in Carolina, went to Tampa's camp this year, has come over to Europe looking to jumpstart his career, so to speak, and what does he do? First 10 minutes with his new club, scores from the blue line. A patented James Winooski slap shot. Nothing is going to get him back into it and feeling the game again, like scoring a goal. James Winooski, 32 years of age, Michigan native. One shift, 47 seconds with Carolina oh. out for the year. A crushing blow. And when you have major knee surgery, you wonder how a player who isn't the fastest player, you've gone through it, you know what it's like, Doug. Well, exactly right. He made his game. He's a great passer of the puck out of the zone. Smart player, and he possesses a world-class shot. And to your point, Steve, it's not easy coming back from an injury, but as I said moments earlier, nothing will give him a greater lift than having scored that first goal here this afternoon for Lugano. Yeah, Kenner Inberg, 0 for 1 on the power play. Centering the puck in front of the net. There was Rock Takar, the 27-year-old, who lit it up for Brastislava last year. Another penalty coming up on the play for interference. And I believe once again, Mikhail Kukovsky, the former OHLer, is going to go to the box here. And another power yeah. play for Lugano. They're one for one. Yeah, Ketterinberg, 0 for 1. And he's got to move his feet. Kukovsky's a big player, six foot three, but you've got to move your feet. Roy is driving right there. He had position on him, but he stopped skating and then pulled him down. In that position, all Kukovsky has to do is just pivot and drive him and guide him off and into the boards. But instead, a lazy penalty allows Lugano to go back onto the power play. Tony Martinson will take the draw. Dario Burglar's on the ice, as is Ryan VC. Here's James Wisniewski, gets it over to Burglar. Back to Wisniewski. Far side, Klassen for the one-timer. He whiffed on that one, but it rolls nicely to Martinson. Gets it to Klassen. Backhand feed over to Burglar with an opportunity. What a play by James Wisniewski, setting up Burglar. He almost scored. I think Megalinski may have blocked that oh, one. Oh, a beautiful play. I thought this was Newski was going to walk in and tee it up, but instead the unselfish pass to Burglar. That was right in his wheelhouse, but an excellent job of Megalinski sliding across, getting the blade of his stick, I believe, on it, deflecting the puck into the mesh above the goal, but a tremendous play, again, from James Wisniewski on the Lugano blue line. And remember, no Damian Bruner, the former yeah. NHLer, is out for the tournament, or he'd be on the power play right now. Absolutely right. Wisniewski gets it in for Ryan VC to Burglar near side. Back behind the net. He's got Martinson in front. Back to Burglar at the near hash marks. Back behind the net to Klassen. Near side, Wisniewski, one-timer. Hit a leg in front. I think that was VC who accidentally got a left shin pad on it. Wisniewski, near side to Burglar. Wrist shot tipped in front of the net. Puck comes to the far side where Martinson corrals it. Gets it back to the point to Wisniewski. Sets up shop. Top of the point. Gets it into Martinson. Far circle to Klassen. Klassen loses the handle. Picked off there by Torchenyuk, who gets it out and down the ice. Overhandle the puck, Klassen right there. You want to drive in. He pulled four Yekaterinburg defenders close to him, then slide it back to Wisniewski on the blue line. What a play there by Wisniewski to gain the zone yeah. without dumping it in. However, it's corralled by the team in white, and they get it down the you ice. You know what's interesting? When you look at NHL veterans like Wisniewski, particularly the ones that are gifted offensively, they never lose that. Despite the fact that the legs may not be what they were five, six, seven years ago, the brain is still working at an optimal level. You can see it already here in the first 13 minutes of the game. Zone entries, my friend. It's all about zone entries. The dump and chase as we used to know it is dead. That play was yeah. a chip and chase, and it was recovered by Lugano. Exactly. It's a, it's a strategic chip, right? You're chipping it, and you're using that as a means to re -get, sort of reclaim the puck rather than just dump it in and then trying to fight it again. It's an offensive move, and we, you and I have talked about this so many times, the importance now of puck possession. It's something that we didn't even talk about as recently as two or three years ago. 
Hoffman with a shot, easily gloved by Lesutin, and he'll hang on. If you can't skate at any level in this game, you can't play. And here's Gregory Hoffman, another guy who had an excellent tournament last year. Carolina fifth rounder. Someone that I really thought four or five years ago had the potential to make the move to the National Hockey League, but instead has become an excellent Swiss League player. He's played numerous times for the national team, but has never really achieved that next step that would have allowed him to challenge for a spot with the Hurricanes. Second year with Lugano. He had 17 goals last yeah. year. And he's got a great shot, a very quick release, a heavy shot. Skates well. He's physically big enough. He's 6'1", 200 pounds, but Something's just held him back, and I've often thought he had the skills, particularly the skating, to make that move to the National Hockey League, and, and yet has decided to remain in Switzerland. Steve Cooley is Doug Honiger here. We're into period one of game one. There's a shot from the point. Alexandro Shiza lets it go, and Ivan yeah. Lesutin, perhaps a bit of a surprise starter. I was getting ready for <laughs> Igor Yastinski. Igor Yastinski is not even dressed. No, I know. I, we, we were all expecting Yastinski. He's their number one goaltender. And to see Lazutin come out, a guy who's played one game in the KHL in such an important game, certainly surprised a lot of observers here in Davos. Loose puck in front, corralled by Simakov. Instead of shooting it down the ice, he tried to make a little play. It didn't work. He gets it back again. Near corner as the penalty to Kakovsky is now over. Lugano is 1 for 2 on the power play. Yet Rinberg is 0 for 1. The goal scorer. James Wisniewski, who will be our first intermission guest. Here comes Yekaterinburg in over the line. Nice little give and go feed there with Simikov, working it nicely with Takar, but it was broken up. Simikov has it now. Pinching back door there is Tommy Cavisto, the veteran Finnish defenseman who gets it in, but he didn't have any help. No, and he's been quiet. He had an excellent tournament last year. Real smooth offensive defenseman. Good skater, but we haven't seen a lot of him so far here in the first period. Linus Klassen leaves it for Ryan Wilson. He loses the puck. It's brought back in by Alexander Torchenyuk. Let's it go, and it went wide. We'll hear from Torchenyuk as the day and days move along. Puck is corralled here by... Oh. Gubin lets the shot go. Loose in front of the net. There's Wisniewski after the save by Merzlikens. Clearing it from harm's way. They pin the puck along the near boards where it's corralled by Tony Martinson, the 36-year-old veteran. Skates it smartly to center. Looking for Klassen. Broken up momentarily. Gets it back again. There's a shot in front of the net as Ryan V.C. Oh. The New York State native almost put that one in on a broken play. Playing together with the two Swedes, Martinson and Klassen. A nice little pass there from Klassen to VC, but Lesutin again in the Yekaterinburg goal. His fourth big save so far here in the first period. Sloppy on that play was veteran Nikolai Timoshov yeah. that allowed that play to develop that almost led to the VC chance. There's a big hit at center ice. Throwing his weight around is Pavel Turbin. Puck comes to the near side. Too far for Goloshev. Icing is waved off on the play. And you really get the sense here that Turbin, with that hit, looking to send a message to his teammates. They've been flat here in the first. Two on one. Rule with an opportunity. Sebastian Rule. And he runs into yeah. the goalkeeper, Lesutin. So Sebastian Rule is going to get a goaltender interference penalty. He doesn't like the call wearing the full yeah. face shield because of an injury. Do you buy the call, Doug? I don't know. Let's see it again right here. His Gardner right here slides it across the rule. The puck just threw his legs, and all he did was slide in him. He didn't make any overt attempt to hit the suit and watch him right here. He just slides in, and he was in a prone position right there because he was trying to reach back for the puck. The puck was between his legs. His head was down. By the time he came up, there really wasn't any move for him to get away from the suit. In. I don't look at that as saying that was an overt attempt to impede the suit in the Yekaterinburg goal. I don't know what your thoughts are on it. Well, I think in that situation, I always hearken back to if it was an overtime, would you make that call? In a tournament like this, it's like every game is overtime. I wouldn't have made the call. But I'm it does even up the penalties at two apiece. And that's an excellent answer. I may steal that from you and use that at some other point during the tournament. Yes. Don't worry. I wake up in the morning and read some of the things I said on the air the day before. One to nothing to score. Lugano taking on Yakaterinburg. Power play number two for the KHL team. Cleared to the line, but not out. Kept in by Nikita Shitov. Near side, and it's poked down the ice there. Yeah. Nicely by Julian Walker. Not an yeah. offensive player, but a good defensive really player. Really good defensive player with Sanitz and LaPierre, the checking line for Lugano. They do an excellent job on the penalty kill. Shitov winds his way in, gains the zone without dumping it in to Mikanov, who's had a lot of puck time. Right to the net, hard. Lost the handle, yeah. and it's cleared down the ice. Okay. Nice play there by Ryan Gardner, the 38-year-old from Toronto. 
veteran job. Great job by Mers Lickens on the save on Mikanov. A big guy, six foot five, doesn't move well, but great hands, soft hands, and really protects the puck well. Starting on the rush here once again, the rock to car, Alexi Simikov combination. Controlled there by Takar. He loses it. Once again, Gardner corrals it and gets it down the ice. Really good penalty kill from Lugano. Well coached Pat Curcio, the former London Knight assistant coach alongside Dale Hunter, doing an excellent job with the Lugano, Lugano specialty teams. Stanislav Chistov coughs up the puck to Raphael Sanitz, who dumps it in. Once again, Julian what? Walker quickly on it. They've changed three times. He's been on for two PKs already, and now he's in after the loose puck. Nice play there by Philip Fuhrer to get a shot on goal shorthanded. Nice job of fear. The patience on the blue. I liked him there. Instead of panicking, he was since he had time, gave himself a nice lane and a good shot. And Lazutin again playing very well in the Ekaterinburg goal. Somewhat surprising given the fact that Uzo had one regular season start so far this year in the KHL. Under 10 seconds to go in the second power play for Yekaterinburg. They're fourth in the Harlemov division, trying to use this tournament as a springboard. Oh, what a play! Right in on goal in the back end scores! Dimitri Monia! What a goal, what a play. We're tied at one. All right, so Dimitri Monia has been the player of the period so far here, Katarinburg. Number 81, the dynamic four. Look at him right here, takes in the neutral. He's coming down, one on four. Beautiful slide move. Chiesa played the puck. He's got to be smarter right there. Just take the body. Slides it to his back. And you see him slide through the defense right here onto the back end. Not a big angle right here. I thought that Merzlikens did a decent job coming out, but the back end is always deceptive for goaltenders. Look at here. The puck's bouncing slightly and picks it just on the far side inside the oh. post. A beautiful goal by number 81, Dimitri Monia. 28 years of age. First year with the team. Played in the Czech Republic. For half a season, great skill. They wanted him in Yekaterinburg in a very tough KHL with 29 teams, including the 29th franchise in China, my friend, as yeah. the KHL is expanding very quickly. Absolutely. They're looking to expand. They obviously want to grow. I think the next move, there's a lot of talk about the KHL moving to London, begin, putting a franchise oh, in there really? beginning next season to make it the 30th franchise. 1-1 one, one is the score in game number one. No icing as Artem Garayev negates the icing there, but he might be offside. So as they clear the zone, play will continue. As we approach the 18-minute mark in a very entertaining first period of game one, James Wisniewski scoring and Dimitri Monia also scoring. Yeah, Katarinberg tying that one up. I don't know if that was officially on the power play or not, but in theory it's a power play goal because the fifth skater couldn't help out. Exactly right. It was just a tail end of the power play. Just an outstanding job from Monia, splitting the defense and then beating Merz Lickens on that backhand. But he has certainly been the player that we've noticed the most here in the first period for Yekaterinburg. Puck is shot down the ice. Uh. Offside as Ryan Vesey was a step ahead of the play. 1-1, one, one, period number one. You're watching the Spengler Cup on TSN. We're doing well, we're doing our job. We can only worry about what we're doing. I, I like hey. having Doug up with me with all the know, problems, it's better. No, I like down there. No, no, but with problems, it's better. Here you go. Hi, everybody, welcome. Mm -hmm. Play just underway, game one between Lugano and Yakaterinburg at the 2016 Spengler Cup, the 90th edition. Former NHLer, James Wisniewski opening the scoring on the power play. And moments ago, a beautiful individual effort by Dimitri Monia makes it a 1-1 game. Here's an opportunity on the break. Zacherson, but he can't put it in on the backhand. And you like Pat Zacherson as some physical stuff happens behind the play as some offense for Lugano added to the club this year. Fantastic play right there. That was a nice combination of Zacherson. You're seeing to see the play develop right here. That long backhand play comes up to Zacherson, the Swedish forward. Look at that nice little play right here. Pass, found Hoffman in the seam. Hoffman with the back, and again, always a deceptive play for a goaltender. Look at the nice pass coming in here. And Zacherson coming in, but look at Lazutin. Poised in the goal. He's played with a lot more calmness and poise than I would have expected, Steve, for a goaltender who saw such little amount of action. So far, only one regular season start in the KHL this season. 
Yeah, one game for Yekaterinburg, yep. and then with Niznekamisk, yeah, he had a pretty good record, all things considered, in a 9.23 save percentage. Yep. We've got 70 seconds to go in period number one. Face off to the left of Ivan Asutin. In theory, the third goalie behind Igor Yastinsky and Vladimir Sakatsky. But Yastinsky is not dressed, and Sakatsky is the backup as Yekaterinburg gets it out and down the ice. It's musical chairs in the Yekaterinburg goalie situation right now. We don't know what's happening with them from the goaltending. We expected one, and we ended up with someone who just joined the team from... Under a minute to go. Puck is shot down the ice and picked up by Philip Fuhr, the former Ranger draft pick. Gets it out to center for Max Lapierre, who's been noticeable yeah. with a lot of energy here for Doug Shedden's crew. They use this third line right here, the checking line, led by Lapierre a lot. Doug Shedden depends on him a lot. As you said, he has been very visible so far here in the first period. Puck comes to center where it's shot down the ice by Raphael Sanitz, the former Blue Jackets seventh rounder, and then he heads to the bench with under 20 seconds to go in an entertaining first period. Little give and go there for Kukowski. Didn't work. Kukal in on it as Martinson gets the puck to Wisniewski. Wisniewski to Martinson. Gets it to class and oh, he had one more opportunity down the wing. Let's it go. Whistles it wide to the far side. Wisniewski with a shot. That made its way to the net. VC at the horn over top of the net. A very entertaining first period. Ends 1-1. Lugano and Yakaterinburg was Nuski for the team in black and Dimitri Monia for the team in white, Doug. And Steve, you know, this has been, an, as you said, an entertaining period. Two teams that were struggling in their respective leagues coming into the tournament have put on an excellent show here through 20 minutes. Game one of 11 of the 2016 Spengler Cup. We're back live with James Wisniewski and Vic Rutter, of course, next.
1980 aber der tiefe Fall des ERC Arosa. Finanzieller Kollaps und freiwilliger Abstieg in die erste Liga mit Guido Lindemann. Was hätten Sie überhaupt dazu bewogen, in Arosa zu bleiben und in der ersten Liga zu spielen? Ja, es ist wie es ist. Ich muss etwas sagen. Arosa ist einfach meine Heimat. Zweitens, äh, ich bin nach vorne an einem Geschäftsausbau und äh, dort werde ich gerne dabei sein. Und das ist vor allem jetzt ja zum Rasenraum als erstes Schlag, aber es ist ja auch wieder auf. Nach einer Saison kehrt er doch in die oberste Liga zurück, spielt für Ambri und Kur, beendet seine Karriere aber mit 44 Jahren im Bein, wie der Piersander sein, in HC Arosa. Und hinter ist er schon ganz viel Spannung dort zusammen mit seinem Sohn und Sven Lindemann, weil er schon lange lang in der National Liga war.
Check one, two, back on headset up here, back on headset. I got you, do you got me? Doug, they're talking to you. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I do. You yeah, got I mean, her. that's a good idea because we would have had you a huge screw all. up with, with Razin. And, that, that, and that's exactly how I did it. Well, the, the problem that I'm, I understand that. The problem that I have is because I'm, I'm not able to hear myself. You got it. Oh, I know. Me too. It's crazy. <laughs> you get out. Well, you sound great, bud. Oh, well, you know, really? my goal my goal is to be able to do 11 games. The rest will take care of itself. Which is my volume? Do you know? Puck is dropped. We're underway. Cooley, the, which is yours? Your internal This is all voice. mine. This is know, all which yours. Which is your internal voice? Uh, up Turn here. Up. Let me hear it. Check one, two. Check one, two. One more time. One more time. Mm, I don't check like one, it. Two. I, there's something wrong. No, no, yeah. There's something wrong. It's just not right. No. I'm getting, it's like a dullness. It's just not. Come on. Welcome back to the 2016 Spengler Cup. 
Steve Coolius, Doug Honiger, and the rest of our TSN crew. There's a look at Doug Shedden, head coach of Lugano. They lost in the final last year, 4-3 to Canada. What a show that was. Elvis Merzlikens, there he is standing on his head. He gave up one goal in that period, and it was a beauty to Dimitri Monia. James Wisniewski, we talked to him after one period, scored for Doug Shedden. Absolutely. And airlifted in here at the start of this tournament, went to training camp with, with uh, Tampa Bay, was not signed to a contract, is looking at the European option as a way of restarting and jump-starting his career, if you will. Looked very good in the first period, and particularly so when you factor, he hasn't played a competitive game since that shift last season in Carolina where he blew out his knee. You hear the referee who is mic'd up and the camera's on his head. That is the trend in the NHL and, of course, in Europe, where underway is Julian Walker lets that one go. Blocked, loose puck in front of the netminder, Ivan Lesutin, who, all things considered, had a pretty good period, and there is the goal score. And there's Wisniewski. Doesn't move the way he did four, five, six years ago, but smart. As I mentioned earlier on in the first period, you never lose your brain. You can see really smart, Smart, smart hockey, but there's a big Mironov number eight. Big guy, doesn't skate particularly great, but nice soft hands, deceptively soft hands. Created a couple of good scoring chances for himself in the first period. 34 years of age from the Ukraine, and you know what? He had the puck a lot in that period, Doug. Very methodical in his movements, but a big body. Not a typical Russian type player, but in a game like this, it's been very effective in moving the puck, even though his feet don't move as quick as his hands and mine does. And that's a great point, Steve, because he absolutely is not your typical Russian player. Here he is on the ice now. Mikhanov number eight, leaves it there for another big body. That's Dmitry Megalinsky, who takes a hit there by the Spengler Cup sign. And back comes Lugano the other way. Long lead fee looking there for Raphael Sanitz. The 33-year-old who spent time in the East Coast League and the American League is in on the forecheck. As is Pat Zacherson, we're expecting big offensive things from him as back comes, yeah, Katarinberg the other way, Mikhail Kakovsky, the Czech national, lets it go in a nice glove save there by Merzlikens. Merzlikens looked very good in the first period. There's Mikovsky right here. The Czech national you referenced earlier with a nice shot. Blake comes up, good job. This is classic skating, but look at him. Defense holding it, Kies at 27, holding his ground. Merzlikens able to see the wrist shot coming in, stabs it with his glove. Three points for a regulation win, two points for an overtime victory or shootout victory. We're under NHL rules, my friend. We'll go to three on three if the score dictates such. We did not have any of that in the round robin last year, although you begged for it and you didn't get it. I most certainly did. I think the entire viewing audience live and in the stadium was looking forward to seeing the three on three on the big sheet. All things considered, the 2016 version, the 90th Spengler Cup has a a lot to live up to as last year had so much drama and excitement. Canada against Minsk. Ben Scriven's on Minsk. Mason Raymond representing Team Canada. That game comes up later today on our family of TSN channels. It's all hockey all the time here with the World Juniors and the Spengler Cup as we're 90 seconds into the period. Back comes Rock to Carr the other way in front. Demonia! And he's denied by Merz Lickens as once again, Dimitri Monia seems to find open ice. He drew another penalty. So the third power play for yeah, Katarinberg is coming up. Lesutin goes to the bench. On comes Torchenyuk for the extra attacker. It's touched, and the fifth power play of the game, third for yeah, Katarinberg, and Monia draws it again. And he has, it looks like it's gonna be Ryan Vesey going off for Lugano, but look at nice soft pass here. Look at Monia driving it, taking it with his skate, getting it to his forehand. What a nice job, Merzlikens. Getting down, getting the pads on the ice and making that save with his right pad. Merzlikens has looked exceptional here throughout the first 30, 20 minutes or so. Has not had a great season in Switzerland so far. Expected to be the top goaltender in the league. Hasn't been, but has looked very good in the Lugano goal here this afternoon. Do you believe the Spengler Cup can be a springboard for these two teams who, let's be honest, are under 500 with their club teams this year? You absolutely can. Lugano used it as a springboard last year getting advancing all the way to the Swiss Finals. They weren't even in a playoff position when they came to the tournament. And I think Ekaterinburg will be looking for similar success as a result of playing in the tournament this year. Puck comes back to the point. Timoshov lets it go, fires it wide. Corralled by Gardner once again. He gets it down the ice, as I believe that was Max Lapierre hammered by Timoshov as he goes to the bench now with a good physical check. 
on the power play. Timoshov is a physical defenseman. You don't see a lot of Russian defensemen that are prepared to step up and make the hit, but Timoshov certainly is one of them. Here's Raphael Sanitz, the 33-year-old, fourth year with the team on the PK, lets it go. And Lesutin gloves that one and hangs on. As there's the check once again. Yeah, LaPierre was not expecting it. You can tell he spent the last year in change in Europe. Head was down, wasn't expecting to be hit, and Timoshov came and gave all he could handle right there along the boards. Second round pick of Montreal back in 03, his third year overseas, over 600 NHL games under his belt. Yeah, and helped Lugano advance to the final last year. Still plays the same role. He's a big checking centerman, an agitator out there, and he's looked very good here for Lugano. Here's your buddy, Alexei Mikanov, in over the line. Drops it off there where it's shot by Shitov. Caroms to the far corner. Sanitz on it again, one of the best penalty killers for Doug Shedden, but he can't get it out. Hard to the net there is Artem Garayev. Haven't called his name too much this afternoon. Here's Mikanov in front, Kukow. Fires it over the net. The 5'9", 185 small forward has got some offensive flair. Puck comes to the near side for Megalinski on the power play. 34 seconds to go. Megalinski, Kukal going for the Sedin tip in the slot, but I don't think Mikanov knew it was coming. No, and they did not do much of a job trying to regroup and get the puck back. Good job by four getting the puck out of the zone. Here's Simikov had a chance to break to the net and still he stops up with the Gretzky delay looking for help. Under 20 seconds to go in the third power play for Yakaterinburg. We're tied at one. Here's a shot by Kakovsky. Ricochets to the near side. Picked up by Vasilevsky, who's not seen a lot of ice so far in the game. Let's it go. Stopped in front. Loose. Looking for that one with Simikov, but he can't get it out as the penalty is now over. Looking for Vasilevsky near side, and instead back comes Max Lapierre. One-on-one -on -one with a shot. Nice save by Lesutin there as he steers it into the corner. Puck comes back to the point. Philip Fuhrer lets that one go. Didn't miss by much. Back behind the net. VC in front. Oh, what a save by Ivan Lesutin. His best save of the night from Klassen. Point blank range. Icing on the play. Yeah, Katerinburg. We're tied at one. This game is coming to you from Davos, Switzerland. The 2016 Spengler Cup. You're watching live action of the 90th Spengler Cup from Davos, Switzerland. The Vail Ant Arena sold out once again. Later today, Team Canada in action against Minsk. Minsk represented by Rob Klinkhammer, Matt Ellison, and Ben Scribbins, three of the Canadians on that team. Matt Ellison was on Team Canada when they won with Guy Boucher a year ago. Mason Raymond. Andrew Ebbett and company representing Canada this time around. Gregory Campbell, Stanley Cup champion. We'll hear from him in our broadcast as the puck comes out to center ice and Stefan Ulmer in his own zone gets it there for Klassen, who had a glorious scoring opportunity moments ago. And Lasuti made an exceptional save. As you rightfully know, the save of the period, possibly the game, a great pad save on Klassen. Here's Monia with a shot. Outside, inside, and he lets it go. A skilled play down the wing. Now he goes to the front of the net looking for the puck, but it just hopped over his stick as it comes back out to center. Timoshov, who likes to throw his weight around, the little Forsberg bump back, like yeah. I like to call it, which is kind of a, a mini modern play in the last 20 years. Absolutely, it works. You're, these guys aren't expecting it. First a big hit earlier on up here, and then just a soft shoulder on Fetsini allowed him to win the puck. Evgeny Shasalin behind his net loses it. Corralled here on the spinorama shot by Luca Fazzini. He's a youngster, 21 years of age, doesn't get a lot of ice for Doug Shedden. Let's another shot go Fazzini, but if he continues to be a spark plug like that, he'll get more and more ice time. Highly skilled kid, played on the under 20 national team for a couple of years. A kid with a lot of development ahead of him still. He's a local product from Lugano, but someone that Lugano and coach Doug Shedden would like to see find a role on this team. Well, it's Corsi on that shift was yeah. good because he put three pucks <laughs> towards the net. Fazzini is 21, yeah. 
as I mentioned, up and down with the Swiss B League. And when yeah. people don't know, you played over here, the Swiss B League doing a good job of sending players to the well, they, A League. Yeah, they have their farm team. There's Fettini right there, the spin move, the wrist shot, nice save. Right here, off of his shoulder, but Fettini's got great hands, not a great skater, not big. Good hockey brain, good hands, but he still needs to develop himself and he get, needs to get stronger in order to establish himself in this lineup. Alex Mikanov with the puck here, getting the feed from Kukal. In terms of real possession time, I think Monia and Mikanov yeah. have had the puck more than anybody else on the ice. Puck comes to the far side where Ryan Wilson tried to poke it out, didn't work. Now he battles Mikanov, loose in front but he couldn't get good fiberglass on that one to get it towards the net, and instead, it comes back to Nikita Shitov. He dumps it in, long changes, remember, on the 200 by 100 feet rink here, and we noticed last year the ice was good right throughout the 11 games, and it's fresh and fast to start the tournament, Doug. Yeah, and one of the issues that we had last year is sort of halfway through each period, we saw a lot of snow. What they don't do here, and they're doing in the National Hockey League, so obviously they're not cleaning the rink during the periods, and that's really affected the quality of play. Yan Buktel with a nice little chip to himself to get it in deep. Loses it there momentarily to Alexander Shiza. And back comes Julian Walker at center. Two on three rush and over the line. Walker giving chase, does the shoulder check as a man behind him, instead gets it behind the net. Walker getting it back there from Raphael Sanitz, who's had a strong period so far. Sanitz. The former Blue Jacket pick spins and fires towards the net. We're seeing a lot of that in the NHL, too, where you try to get a high-low screen in front. It wasn't accomplished, but it was a puck towards the net. But it makes perfect sense because what you want to do is you want the goaltender following the puck up high, and then you bring, as you said, the low guy in front to create the screen opportunity. Right, You'll see it right here. Here's Sanitz, the Columbus draft pick. The wrist shot comes in. Look, Lapierre just in front of the net. The low screen in front of that makes it difficult for Lazutin and the Ekaterinburg goal to track the puck coming in from the shot from the blue line. A lot of changes on this Ekaterinburg team. Andre Razin no longer the head coach. We called him the human volcano, yeah. ready to go off. At the end of last year, he had a good year. They won 30 games. They won 30 games. He got rid of 15 players, and eventually, I guess, he wore his welcome. <laughs> to say he's Iron Mike-like would say that Iron Mike was too soft. And Iron Mike won championships as well, something Razin hasn't been able to do during his KHL coaching career. And we say hello to Iron Mike Keaton. <laughs> Saw him during the World Cup, said he'd be watching the Spengler this year as there's a great opportunity by Evgeny Chassel in the 28-year-old. First year with the club, lets it go. He's got some speed, and he was stopped right there. And Shesalen is one of 15 newcomers on this Ekaterinburg team. You mentioned Razin last year. The team advanced to the first round of the playoffs, which on most cases would have been a success for this small market team, but instead used it as an opportunity for house cleaning, and eventually he became part of that house cleaning. Stanislav Chistov's on the ice right now. Fifth overall 2001 with the Ducks. I've expected more in terms yeah. of puck possession and chances. I haven't seen it from 41 so far, as there's a shot blocked in front of the net. Firing that one was Alexei Simikov. Shistov is on the ice right now, but giving chase is Oleg Gobin. Simikov watching his man as it's shot down the ice, and this will be icing once again against Lugano. As you take a look at number 90 there. Ryan Vesey from New York, 34 years of age, who can put the puck in the net. Absolutely. Another player added late to this Lugano roster, playing with Zacherson and Linus Clausen on what is Lugano's first line. Vesey has played in the NHL with San Jose four years at Cornell, which is where Ben Scrivens went. And a lot of the players you'll see in this tournament do have U.S. college experience as that shot is stopped by Merz Lickens, but a big rebound. As Turbin gets it rink wide to Zeravliov, he got it in deep and then went to the bench. 1 1 as we approach the nine minute mark of the period. Your goal scorer for Lugano, James Wisniewski. Great to see him back. He was so happy during the intermission as he's on the ice now watching Stanislav Chistov, who was Pavel Bure high, let's say, there on the play in front of the net. Nice play by Wisniewski to raise his skate so he wouldn't deflect it in his own net. <laughs> really smart play right there. The puck coming in, instead of acting as a potential deflection or deviation of the puck, Wisniewski lifted it. And look what happened. Lugano able to get the puck and then transition out of their own zone. Martinson to VC gets it back to the point. Keeping it in there is Shiza. Back to VC. Martinson on the cycle. Gets it into Klassen. What a game he's had. Linus Klassen back to the point. There's a shot through a screen by Philip Fuhr, the former Ranger pick, but it didn't find the back of the net. 
Here's Martinson, the under, or Klassen, the under, oh, backhanded toe drag. The underrated, skilled forward on this team for Doug Shedden. Gets a lot of ice time, lost the puck right there. Did he want a penalty? Oh, no, but he's not being consequent enough. It's one thing to handle the puck, but you, all he did was he took himself out of his scoring position, led himself to the boards, and allowed the Ekaterinburg forwards to converge on him, easily winning the puck, displacing him. And look how quickly Ekaterinburg then transitioned. At center ice, there's Fazzini getting more ice. Nice little dipsy do to get around his man, but one move too many. And here's what we're seeing from Lugano here. First period, very consequent, created a number of good scoring chances by driving the puck. More typical Canadian hockey, something that Doug Shedden certainly likes. Here in the second period, far too much individual play, far too much stick handling, and so many times they've taken themselves out of good scoring chances. Puck is shot down the ice, and icing will be the call as Massimo Ronchetti was chasing it down as he was being watched by Rock Takar, the 27-year-old that filled the net with Ratislava last year. There's a nice little yeah. move by Fazzini. And that's a good play. Look at him. A little slide pass past the defenseman to himself. But then what I would have liked to see from Fazzini is more consequent play. When he gets over the blue line, there's a tendency to pull up and hold up and look for the trail instead of driving to the net and then taking the defenseman with him. Doug Honiger, who represented Switzerland at the 1992 Winter Olympic Games. Played in the Quebec Major Junior League for Wayne Gretzky with the Hull Olympique. He was talked into it by Wayne. Uh, broadcast partner here as we're past the halfway mark of period number one. One one is the score. There's a shot by Rock Takar that was blocked behind the net. Nice play by Stefan Almer to get it to the near side, but not out. Spinning and firing that one was Goloshev, who was touched by a high stick, but brought back by Burglar the other way. And here comes Lugano with numbers and offside at the line. It would have been a one, two, three on one. Instead, we're still tied at one here in Davos. We'll be back. Live action just underway. Under nine minutes to go in period at number two. Yekaterinburg in white. Lugano in black and blue are tied 1-1. Here's James Wisniewski, the goal scorer. Nice play. Scores! Ryan Wilson gets the feed from James Wisniewski. 2-1 Lugano. And there it is, James Wisniewski making himself useful. Scored the first goal. Look at this. Held onto the blue line. The nice pass to Ryan Wilson, the former Colorado Avalanche. A great slap shot. But look at him step into the puck. But the key right here, you've talked about it earlier on, Steve. Getting men in front of Lazute. Look at that. Big 38 Sanits. And just to his left, 25 Max Lapierre. Blocking the view of Lazute in the Ekaterinburg goal. But James Wisniewski. I want to just talk to him about for a moment. Flown in here. Joined the Lugano Club at the last minute. Scored Lugano's first goal. Nice job keeping the puck in the blue and getting it over to Ryan Wilson and assisting here on their second. Raphael Sanitz was in front. Let's listen for the announcement. It might have been tipped by Raphael Sanitz, but both goals generated from James Wisniewski and the point. Wisniewski over to Wilson. And it is Raphael Sanitz who got a piece of that one. So it was Nooski with a goal and an assist and a great play by Wilson to get it through the screen. Absolutely. I mentioned earlier on, I thought Lugano were playing too much on the perimeter, overhandling the puck. They had really good success in the first period, bringing the puck to net, playing a more traditional Canadian brand of hockey. Both of their goals, what were they? Shots from the blue line with men in front of Lazutin. Lazutin really had no chance on that one. We talked about setting up the screen. You did, and it came to fruition. I guess, Doug, you had a hunch, and that hunch <laughs> did pay off for goal number two. Well, you certainly led me into that. You're talking about the high-low, and that was a perfect execution of that. Puck goes high, and then what do you do? You put two big forwards, both of them over six foot two. 
That's Sanitz and that's Max Lapierre. Big bodies in front of Lazutin. And there's the goal scorer right there, Raphael Sanit, the former Columbus Blue Jacket draft pick. Big veteran player here on this Lugano team. He's already got the Joe Thornton, Brent Burns <laughs> playoff beard. Played in the AHL, played in the East Coast League. An 01 seventh round pick. He's 33 years of age. And you know what? As we go along, maybe we should keep track of some of your hunches, my friend, because time and time again, they do pay off as Fazzini spins and fires. Scores! Sprawling in front of the net. Ryan Gardner puts it in. 3 1 Lugano. And Ryan Gardner, number 51 for Lugano, he's just a beautiful player. He's been in this league for years. He's such a veteran player. He's so well liked on this team. Look at him. Beautiful possession in front of the net. Big six foot four inch Swiss Canadian forward from Toronto. Look at him. Never loses his position. And more importantly, watch the presence right there. He knew exactly where the puck was. And then he saw Lazutin spread his legs, was able to put that puck through it. This is the vital play right here. Look at him. He held on to it and allowed that gap to be created by Lazutin spreading his legs. Just a beautiful job. Positioning, poise, and then finish by number 51, Ryan Gardner, a veteran who we've seen here many times representing Team Canada as well in this tournament. 38 years of age, he's an example. If you love the game, even if there's no place for you at the NHL level, you can keep playing almost 40 years of age as we're getting a goaltending change. Ivan Lesutin is out. Vladimir Sakatsky is in. Ivan Lesutin is out. Vladimir Sakatsky is in. So the experiment did not work. Back to Gardner. He's played with London and North Bay in the OHL. He's been over here since 1997. He's coming up on his 20th year, my friend, playing hockey and playing well overseas. And he's represented Switzerland in the Olympics a couple of times as well. He's an outstanding Canadian ambassador over here. He's been a great player in this country for a number of years. He's class. He represents Canada very well. He's been a great contributor to Swiss hockey. Well like. And it's interesting, I spoke to Doug Shin about him before the game and asked him a little bit how much longer he thought he could play. And he said, listen, he doesn't skate the way he did, obviously he's 38, and here's another view of this goal, but he's so smart, he's so good on face-offs, and he really knows how to use his body on the power play. And that was an example of it right there. Although a five-on-five -five goal, that's where you're likely going to see Ryan Gardner on the power play in front of the goal. I really like the ref cameras. We had the audio last year, what we call the sound-ups in the business, and those referee cameras are bang on. Clear footage of seeing the price you still need yeah. to pay. Maybe it's not the price that you paid in Bobby Clark's era, but the price you need to pay in front of the net. But there's, an, there's something to be learned from that. We talked about it probably about three or four minutes ago, the importance of just being playing simple, smart, consequent hockey. Lugano didn't do it for the first half of the period. They've since changed it here in the last five minutes, and what has happened, they scored two goals as a result. And the crowd, mostly pro-Lugano, yeah. listened to them. In the Davos den and everything else, making noise as that shot is fired by Burglar. Rebound, fired by Hoffman, stopped again by Sikatsky. One more opportunity coming up as a penalty's on the way to Yekaterinburg. Wisniewski back to the point to line is Klassen. Six on five here with the empty net. Power play coming up to Lugano unless they score here. There's a shot by Wisniewski, whistled yeah. wide. And a penalty to Yekaterinburg. So Vladimir Sikatsky goes from backup goalie to right into the fire. I believe Tommy Cavisto, the veteran Finn, is getting the penalty. Yeah, he absolutely is. I've not called Cavisto's name very often this afternoon. Yeah. He was a real good player for them last year. But look at it right here. This is it, the work down low. Lugano doing an excellent job. There's Cavisto right here. He's gonna go off for the hook, but Lugano doing a nice job, winning the puck down low. What do they do? They bring it back to the blue line. It's almost as though they were listening to us. We've been talking about the, the high-low situation, and Lugano has guys that can shoot the puck very well from the blue line, starting with number 93, the right-handed shooting defenseman, James Wisniewski. There's a look at Cavisto, 25 years of age from Finland, drafted by Caroline in 2009, played for the Red Deer Rebels in 2009. This is his second year with Yakaterinburg. I thought he was one of their best defensemen last year, to be honest with you. Yeah, he was excellent offensively. We saw him quarterbacking their power play. But so far here in the first, you know, pretty much two-thirds of the game, we've hardly called his name at all. James Wisniewski starting the rush to Burglar over to Linus Klassen, setting up back to Wisniewski as they like to go into the 1-3-1 that we see in the National Hockey League from time again. Wisniewski shot! Save Sikatsky! And he is tested just like that as Wisniewski lets it go. Right, so the play that they're working on right there, there's Sikatsky just... Come, came into the game 
for you, Katerinberg. Referee checking with them. This is what Lugano's going to do. They're going to work the play on the right side half wall with Claussen. They're going to work it. Martinson, number nine, is going to slide from below the hash mark. He's going to try to get possession in front of the net. Position, excuse me. The puck is going to be sliding back to his new ski for the one-timer. And Lugano is going to converge in front of Siskatsky, looking to create sort of an interference, if you will, in front. And that's how they're going to generate their offense here on the power play. Big face-off one there by Yakaterinberg, and then Nikita Sheetov does a nice job of getting it out and down the ice. James Wisniewski starting out. I didn't get a chance to ask him this, of course, in a 90-second interview. How much is the Vegas factor in play for many players that we watched last year go from this tournament right back to the NHL? Here's Garayev looking for Kukal in front. That play broken up. Listen, we talked to a bunch of the guys in the morning skates, and I think it's on the back of the mind of every guy who's ever played in the National Hockey League. They all look at Vegas as possibly their last opportunity to get back into the league. And do you think it helps that George McPhee is there and he was at this tournament last year, and that, that's a person that's got a connection to the event in 365 days? No doubt, and I think the best thing about it... Play is broken up and corralled there by... Kakowski who gets it out and it went over the glass. We have a stoppage, right. face off back, and yeah, Katerinberg's end. And just to finish that thought, Steve, he's been here, so he knows the value of the tournament, he knows the quality of play. Yep. And obviously, being where he is now in Las Vegas, it gives him a better ability now to gauge how well these guys are playing and whether or not some of them are worth taking a shot at with an opportunity in Vegas next season. Tom Pyatt. Tommy Pyatt. Corey Conacher. Boucher and himself, obviously. Devin Setaguchi. Devin Setaguchi. The one thing that we've seen re repeatedly over the, the, you know, the 10 plus years that we've been covering this tournament is how much better these players are from when they arrive in Europe to when they go back. And there's been you know, upwards of 20 that have used this tournament as a springboard back to the National Hockey League. And they will all tell you to a man that their play improved as a result of being over here. Under 10 seconds to go in the minor penalty. There's one of the goal scorers. Ryan Gardner dropping it back there to the defenseman. Stefan Almer goes in after it. Penalty's now over. One very good scoring chance for Lugano on the power play. As bringing it in nicely there is Kukau setting things up for Pavel Turbin. Back behind the net. Looking for Rock to Carr. He loses it in front. Oh, what a chance by Buktel. Point blank range, and Elvis Merzlikens hasn't had to be good for a while, but a broken play, and that was his best save of period two. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's been quiet around his net for the last 10 minutes or so, but there he was. Stayed, tracked the puck to Boutel in front of that. You'll see it right here. The key is just to hold your position. There's Zacherson, pushed Boutel to the side, but Merzlikens doing a good job. Tracked the puck from down low, saw the puck was coming out to Boutel in the slot, and never left his focus on where that puck was going. You saw Doug Shedden there moments ago, over 400 games in the NHL. Pittsburgh, Toronto, Detroit, and Quebec. Hoping to use this tournament as a springboard as his club has been a middling team so far in the Swiss League this year. A lot of clubs yeah. have been treading water like his team, and one of the reasons why Elvis Merz Lickens and he could use this tournament to get back to where he was a year ago. And that's exactly what they're hoping for from him. That's what he told us in the morning skate. That's what he told me along the boards during the warm-up, that this tournament has got to catapult him back to the level that he played at last season when he was arguably the best goaltender in Switzerland. Philip Fuhrer is going to get a hooking penalty, yeah. so yeah, Ketter Rindberg Two. will go to the box. That's the second penalty for four, both times. First there was a high stick, and now with hook, he's not moving his feet. He's got to move his feet when he's taking his man off too often. We found him flat-footed. As a result, he's got an over-reliance on his stick. Philip Fuhrer goes to the box. Yeah, Ketterinberg will go to the power play with 3.27 to go. And as we say in the broadcast business, a critical power play for Yak Ketterinberg to make it a one-goal game going into the period. Period number three, face-off controlled by Wisniewski and shot down the ice. Let's keep an eye on number 77, Megalinski. They like to get the puck over to him. Shoots bombs from the blue line. Drafted by Ottawa back in 2005 in the sixth round as Mikanov carries in with Kukal. Kukal pokes it ahead to Artem Garayev. Been a little disappointed in the small Russian forward. Has not been a factor so far today as the puck is shot down the ice. Oh, an excellent penalty kill. LaPierre Gardner right there. But Pat Corsi has done, a, as I mentioned in the first period, and we're seeing more evidence of it again. An excellent job working with the Lugano specialty teams. And where is number 15, Anatoly Goloshev, my friend? He was dancing all over the ice last year and wasn't even on PP1. 
As it's again corralled by Julian Walker, and the defensive forward gets it down the ice. So just like that, 60 seconds, gone. Yeah, they're doing it. Lugano doing a great job holding the blue line. They've won so many loose pucks, and then really consequent when they get to clear the zone. An excellent job again here by this Lugano penalty kill. Here's Nikolai Timoshov, dumps it in. And after the loose puck is Shesalen. Leaves it there for Tommy Cavisto. Back to Timoshov, lets it go through a screen, blocked in front by Chiza. Tries to get it out, pokes it nicely to Raphael Sanitz, who does get it out and down the ice. The goal score to make it a 2-1 game. And that was a heck of a play by 27 Chiesa for Lugano. Big defense when the captain of this team. Going down, blocking the shot, staying with the puck, and then getting it out of the zone. A real nice job by the Lugano defenseman. And once again, Raphael Sanitz gets it out along yeah. the far boards. As Timoshov is spilled, gets it to Tommy Cavisto, who pipes it in again with 15 seconds to go in the minor penalty. Yeah, Katerinberg one for three on the power play with a chance to get back in it. There's a shot that's blocked in front of the net by Steve Hershey as the penalty is over. Vasiliev lets it go from the point. Merzlikens gets a piece of that one. Comes to the near side where it's controlled by Chiesa. Gets it out for Lapierre. Max Lapierre one-on-one, -on -one, driving hard to the net. Vasiliev doing a good job of taking him out there without drawing a penalty. I want to see LaPierre, he's big, he's fast. Too often I see him when he has offensive scoring chances, he has a tendency to pull up in that case too. Could have driven to the net and made it more difficult for the Ekaterinburg defenseman. Under a minute to go, line is Klassen. Nice little move, spins, gets it back over to Ulmer. Shot, stopped in front, clear to the line and out. And icing coming up against Ekaterinburg with just over 40 seconds to play. A very successful period for Doug Shedden's crew. They've scored twice. Yeah, you really get the sense things change for them halfway through here in the second period. As you rightfully know, just an excellent job, readjusted. They made a couple of small changes. I think principally, the most important thing was just being a lot simpler when they're in the offensive zone. Stop overhandling the puck, just bring the puck to the net. And as a result, they've gone ahead in this game 3-1. Faceoff now to the right of Vladimir Sakatsky. 3-1 Lugano, they win the draw. Controlling it there is Philip Fuhrer. Near side here, there's a shot by Ulmer, blocked in front of the net. Kakowski tries to get it out, he can't. Kept in by Klassen. Little give and go there with Martinson, you wanted a Klassen shot. I wanna see them, this is about the third or fourth time where these guys have had the puck in the slot, Klassen and Martinson I'm talking about, where they overpass when I think they've got a great shooting opportunity. Ulmer with a chance, gets it in front of VC in a late two on one. Here's Buktel, waiting. Gets it in front of the net, but Klassen with a great back check there to negate that play. As he had a chance two on one, Buktel, but he couldn't find his man as the period is over. Raphael Sanitz made it two to one. Ryan Gardner made it three to one. The veteran 30 something presence for Doug Shedden's crew. Three to one after 40 minutes. Vic Rauter's second intermission is next.
Our feed, our notes. Here's my sheets. Here's the vantage point. Whew. Thank God I work out. I'm tired already. 22 times up and down the stairs. There's our visiting. Uh, Broadcasters, place is packed, I'm not sure where Doug is. Oh, yeah. 
Yes, 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 I'm all set. Very excited, very happy with the broadcast. 
We're very happy so far. Feel good, I feel, I really do, I feel really good. Doug, headset please. His headset is now uh, on. Doing a great job, boys. Doing a great job. Feels like we were just here a year ago. You should have seen my Periscope walk up 3,000 viewers walking up the tunnel. <laughs> I love that you use that. Got it. Yeah, Shedden was my best one so far, so um, I'll go to school on that. It's always good to have a backup. It's always good to have a backup. Check one, two, three, check one, two. <clears throat> no, I know. You uh, you never touch any of my stuff, no. right? Okay. I need to, I need someone to touch mine so I can hear myself during the, the hear myself talk. Well, I mean, just for anybody would like it. You're looking live at the Vail Ant Arena here in Davos, Switzerland, home to the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup. I'm Steve Coolius with Doug Honiger. It is 3-1 in favor of Lugano. They scored twice in that period. Raphael Sanitz with a nice goal in front on a deflection, Doug. And then Ryan Gardner doing yeoman's work in front of the net. Doug Shedden's team hasn't played like that during the regular season, but we saw the best of Lugano, at least we have for 40 minutes. Absolutely, it's so remarkable how similar they looked to last season. And you said they struggled through the first half of the Swiss season, but this looks like a completely different than the Lugano team we were anticipating seeing. There's 12 teams in the Swiss A League. They're sixth with a record of 15, 17 and three for 45 points. The league has been around in this fashion since 1979. Davos has won this event 15 times. Bern won the championship last year over Lugano. So that's the disappointment you have to understand. And I asked Doug about Elvis Merz-Lickens. Is 40 minutes enough to feel that it's the old Elvis of last year for you? Absolutely, and that's what we've seen here. This looks like this could be the catalyst to elevate him back into the form that he had and enjoyed so much during last season's Swiss season, and especially here during the Spengler Cup. There's Dario Burglar with a sharp from a shot from a sharp angle. I think the net may have been dislodged as the puck did go off the mask of Vladimir Sakatsky, who came in for Ivan Lesutin. And so far, Sakatsky has been perfect. Absolutely. It's a bit of a surprising change because I thought Lesutin played very well. He was replaced roughly halfway through the second period after Lugano scored two goals in a very short period of time. But I thought he looked good. And now Sakatsky, always a difficult thing when a goaltender comes in cold. But to your point, Steve, he's made a couple of good saves since he came into the game. He's 26 years of age. Sukatsky is first year with the team. In 22 games this year, he has a very respectable 919 save percentage. As that puck is cleared over the glass and out of play. We're mostly playing NHL rules, but it's three points for a regulation win, two for an overtime or shootout win. We will go three on three in a shootout if need be. And you do have two coaches' challenges. On the offside, 
and like the NHL Rule 69. Do you like following the NHL's lead? I do because it, it, it makes everything symmetrical, right? It makes it easier for fans to follow, to understand. Yep. They're used to watching the National Hockey League or Major Junior. It makes it a lot easier for them if they're watching the games over here in Europe to know that the rules are similar to what we're using in North America. 3-1 in favor of Lugano. Our game this evening, which will be afternoon in the East in Canada. Is Team Canada taking on Minsk? Rob Klinkhammer, Matt Ellison, who played on Canada's Spengler Cup winning team last year. Ben Scrivens on that team against Mason Raymond, Gregory Campbell, Drew McIntyre, the Canadian goalkeeper, will start for Luke Richardson, who played over 1,400 games in the NHL. He'll have Dave King on the bench with him. And the GM is Sean Burke. He have over 800 NHL games in the league and a ton of international experience. And the other member of that staff, Gordy Dwyer, former coach of the PEI Islanders, now coaching Zagreb in the KHL. A really interesting move to go from the Q over to the KHL, but he's done a very good job in his second season with Zagreb. Puck comes to the near side. The feed for Linus Klassen is too far. Tony Martinson in on the forecheck. Out in front looking for VC, and it just skipped by the New York native and comes back out to center. Simikov gets it in over the line. Momentarily, Stanislav Chistov had it. He lost as it went into the corner, and back it comes to center ice where it's picked off there and shot back in again by Pavel Turbin. And just a sweet little behind the leg backhand pass from Almer, the Austrian defenseman, out to Zakerson. A nice little outlet, you don't see that often. Back to the play between the legs on the tape. Hershey near side to Ron Chidi. Gets it up looking for Gardner, who's broken up, and back comes Yakaterinburg the other way. Artem Garayev is hit from behind, right in front of the bench. No call on the play, considering some of the hooking penalties we had so far. A little surprised that he got away with that one. Puck comes back to the point. Shitov lets it go, it goes wide. Comes to the far side. Well, a shot from a sharp angle there by Buktel. Went off the side of the net. Gardner to Fazzini, Mikanov is there, as is Ryan Gardner, the Toronto native, who has a goal in this game. In fact, his goal made it 3-1. to one. Puck behind the net, controlled by Massimo Ronchetti to the far side for Gardner, chips it out to Fazzini. He goes one-on-one -on -one with his man, a nice defensive play there by Sheetab, and then he goes off. What a good job of Lugano. That was really patient defense in their own zone. They didn't overpress. They stayed and maintained position integrity, then won the puck. A good job from Gardner. Vasilevsky loses the handle there to Max Lapierre, the former Montreal Canadian. He has the 600 games NHL experience, and he's been a factor, especially on the forecheck. He absolutely has. He's been an outstanding, outstanding penalty killer. He still skates really well, and has had a big presence so far here in this afternoon's game for Lugano. Ryan Wilson on the backhand, shovels it in. Alexi Vasilevsky goes to get it, the small undersized defenseman to the far side, to Shasalin, loses it, and once again it ends up on the stick of Ryan Wilson. In over the line, his shot is blocked there by Mikhail Kokoski. And it comes to the far side for Tommy Kavisto. Kokoski, the Finn, and or Kokoski, the Czech, and Kavisto, the Finn, on the ice together here, trying to get some offense for Yekaterinburg. Here's Dimitri Monia in front of the net. There's a nice shot from in close to Salin. Let's it go, but Elvis makes the save. And we will be back to Davos after this. You got her. All good here. Gotcha. Play just underway here in period number three of the opening game of the 2016 Spengler Cup. That shot from a sharp angle by Hoffman steered away. Hoffman gets it back again. Vladimir Sakatsky in net now for Yekaterinburg after Ivan Lesutin got the call and gave up three goals. Not that it was his fault. And we do have a slashing penalty coming up on the play. I'm assuming it's going to go to Oleg Gubin, number 21. So the 35-year-old is going off. And I believe the call is for slashing. 
That is absolutely not how Ekaterinburg wants to lead into the third period. The last thing you want to do, you're down by two, and you take a needless slashing in your own zone. Putting Lugano back on the power play. Two power play goals here so far. And the guy to look for is a newcomer. Number 93, James Wisniewski, manning the right-hand side of the Lugano blue line. Face-off is controlled by Lugano. There's the aforementioned Wisniewski. Tried to get it in for a class, and it was broken up nicely by Kukal, who gets it down the ice. Likes to play pitch and catch with Linus Clausen, number 86. Clausen's going to put himself on the right-hand boards. And Wisniewski, obviously, is a right-handed defenseman on the right-hand side. They pitch it back and forth, and they're looking to set up that one-timer from Wisniewski as he slides across the Lugano blue line. Here's Klassen being watched there by Sheetov. Trying to go back door for Dario Bergler. Didn't work. Pinching in is Wisniewski to keep it in, but a second try. Artem Garayev lofts that one, flying saucer-like down the ice. And the first, that's the first time on the penalty kill we've seen Yekaterinburg actually put pressure on Lugano. They've been far too passive. I thought they've allowed Lugano too much time to make good plays, particularly down low. Here's Linus Klassen. Gets it to Ryan Gardner near side in over the line. Has support there from Pat Zacherson. We have not seen him on the power play too much today. Back to Klassen at the point. Gets it over to Wilson. His shot hits a stick and goes over the glass and out of play. Yeah, that's a nice play. Klassen, 86, looking for Ryan Wilson. He scored, excuse me, assisted. The puck was actually deflected by Sanitz. Assisted on Lugano's second goal. They like to slide it across from him. Really likes to step in on the one-timer from the blue line. Goals in this game for Lugano, James Wisniewski, Raphael Sanitz, and Ryan Gardner. Power play has been a factor so far as you hear the linesman. Barking instructions. Wilson off the draw. Gets it in tight to Fazzini. Gets it back again to Hoffman. Hoffman over to Wilson. Wilson back to Hoffman. Has Fazzini in front. There's a shot. Tipped in front of the net by Julian Walker. Comes back to Wilson at the point, up top. Into Hoffman, shot blocked. Near side for Zacherson. Back to Wilson. Over to Hoffman. Into Fazzini. Nice passing play there, but his shot didn't find the net. It hit a skate in front of the net. I believe it hit Timoshoff. Here's Zacherson. Back to Ryan Wilson. Hoffman, one-timer, stopped in front of the net. Sakatsky getting an arm on that one. Under 15 to go in the minor penalty. Puck comes to Fazzini in the circle. Wilson shot. Screen in front of the net was Ryan Gardner, but the puck didn't find the net. The penalty is now over. Is on to the ice comes Oleg Gubin. Puck is controlled here by Wilson. Gets it to Hoffman. There's a shot tipped in front of the net. The double screen set up once again, Doug. And it's not complicated at all. You bring the puck back to the blue line. You've got guys that can really shoot the puck quick and hard from the Lugano blue line and they just put traffic in front of the net. It works so well, and that has been what Lugano has done to score three goals this afternoon. But what is more the modern style that you alluded to in the second period yeah. is layering the traffic. Exactly. It used to be bodies in front, now layering is a different animal. Well, because the game is a game of motion now, right? And so nobody's standing still. They're sliding in and out. And you talk about it's effectively three layers in the offensive zone, and Lugano did that effectively on the second and third goals. Puck comes back to the point. There's a shot with Lapierre in front, it was fired from Dominique Heinrich, who has not seen a lot of ice time for Doug Shedden, but that puck was towards the net with a big body in front. And that's the same thing, Stanitz is in front of the net, you talk about layering, Lapierre came in late, the puck came back to Heinrich on the blue line, Stanitz 38 was in front of that, then you're going to see, look, Lapierre sliding in, sort of as a third guy, so that's a layer that you're referring to, and it's something that Lugano has done very, very well here this afternoon. Ryan VC. Dominic, Heinrich, James Wisniewski, late additions to the team, and they've all been factors in one way or another so far for Doug Shedd. Yeah, I've been really impressed by Wisniewski. Didn't know what to expect from him, given the fact that he really hasn't played since last season. Penalty coming up on the play against Lugano. I think Steve Hershey's going to get it, and Artem Garaya was going hard to the net. Now, by the naked eye, and we haven't seen the replay yet. I thought Hershey just leaned on Garayev's stick and then Garayev threw his legs out from under him. I can understand why the officials may have been fooled, but it's a 3-1 game. Hershey's going to the box. We'll have another look and see whether this was a stick on stick or whether this was a trip. And here it is. I think you're exactly right. All Hershey didn't move. 
Hershey maintained position right there, and Garayev literally skated through his stick and went over it. It was one of those situations that looked worse to the referee than what would have actually looked like to him if he was able to see the same replay that we did. And once again, there's big number eight, Alex Mikhanov, the 34-year-old from the Ukraine. And he is on the ice here on the power play. Face off, won by Max Lapierre, the former Canadian. Controlled in the corner by Alexander Shiza, who's done very well killing penalties so far in this game. Garayev gets it back to the point to Dmitry Megalinsky. He goes far side to Nikita Shitov. In front, scores! Just like that! Artem Garayev gets a friendly ricochet and puts it into the net. It's now a 3-2 hockey game. Yeah, you could, you could see this play developing. You saw the tussle in front. We're going to come to the highlight in a moment. You can see the tussle in front of that right here. There's Chiesa. Mikhanov has position. What he did was he blinded Merzlikens from seeing the puck to come in. You can see Merzlikens did not control that rebound very well because I don't believe he saw the puck until the very last moment. So he wasn't able to take that puck and guide it off. And instead, the puck rebounded off his pad right to Garayev, who, like all good goal scorers do, they plant themselves on the offside, on the back, on the back door right there, waiting for that rebound opportunity. In that case, from his pad, right to his blade, in the back of the net. 24 years of age, Artem Garayev. 5'9", third year with the team. That's his 16th goal of the year if you count league play and his 23rd point. And it comes on a power play, on a power play that you didn't think Steve Hershey deserved the penalty that he got. I don't think so. And I think it's one, like I said, if the refs would have had the opportunity to see the same the video that we had, they wouldn't have made that call. And as a result, what does it do? It gets the Katerinburg right back in the game. And I think we've seen a momentum shift here. And credit to Vladimir. Sikatsky, since he's come in, he has not allowed a goal in relief of Ivan Lasutin. And that helped turn the game around as it's now 3 to 2. Here's Linus Klassen in with Ryan Wilson heading to the net. Klassen in the corner, plays it behind the net to Tony Martinson. He's on against Anatoly Goloshev, who did not get any power play time in the last two attempts. There's a chance in front of the net. Sikatsky with a nice save in the reverse VH, getting his left shoulder on that one. And the puck comes out to center. Nice little dipsy do, and fired over top of the net by Rock to Car. Near side for Monia. Dimitri Monia, one of the two goals in the game for you. Katarinberg battling with Martinson. Comes back to the point. Turbin with a shot, fires it wide of the short side. Here comes yeah, Katarinberg. A giveaway, however, ends up on the stick of Gregory Hoffman, and they try to slow down the pace. Under the heavy fork check of Evgeny Shasalin right there as yeah, Katarinberg is coming. Dario Burglar in on the chase. Puck fired around the boards by Sakatsky. Out to center for Oleg Gobin. Now and over the line, controlling the puck is Stanislav Chistov. And he goes to the ice. And there's going to be a tripping penalty on Ron Chidi here. And yeah, Katarinberg's going to give a chance to tie the hockey game as Chistop goes down right there. And that's one of the few times we've seen Chistop, a good job driving around the goal. But look, Ronchetti's got to move. This is not a dangerous play right here. All you need to do is cut the angle off. You don't need to go at him. And you certainly don't need to be aggressive with your stick. He's, he's obviously not happy with the call, but there's no question at all right there that the stick pulled Chistop down. And that's a call that's too easy for the referees to make. Stanislav Chistop, 33 years of age, fifth overall of the Anaheim Ducks back in 2001. Played almost 200 NHL games. Face off control by Lugano with under 10 minutes to play here in the third and a chance for Yek Hederinberg to tie the game. Megalinski lets it go. Max Lapierre gets a stick on that one. She's stopped behind the net. Gets it over to the far side. In front of the net is Oleg Gobin. Comes back to the point, Chistov and Megalinski. Chistov with it now, far circle, waiting, being watched by Max Lapierre. There's a shot, ricochets by the skate of Simikov, who has it now. Back to the point, Megalinski fires it wide, and it ricochets out to center ice. Megalinski with a chance to tie the game right there. And that's the first big shot for Megalinski from the blue line. He was a force on that Yekaterinburg blue line in last year's tournament. Oleg Simikov brings it in, Chistov. Gets it in and controlling the puck behind the net. 
is number 14, Simikov. Leaves it there for Gubin. Back to Chistov. Stanislav Chistov has been on for the entire power play. Gets it back again from the point. Vasilevsky lets it go. Nice save by Elvis Merzlikens. Vasilevsky wasn't shooting to score. He was trying to get it on the net there, Doug, and he did. And I, I like that play from Vasilevsky right there. He held on to the puck on the blue end, allowed himself. He's a left-handed shot, slid across the blue end, and Gubin did a nice job getting in front of Merzlikens. You'll see it right here. Look, held on to it. Not the big shot, just pivoted over the wrist shot, and there's Gubin. Chiesa lost him in front of the net. Gubin got in front of Merzlikens, but a nice job of Merzlikens. Was able to square himself to the shooter, saw the puck coming in, and made the save. Perchenyuk on the faceoff, loses the draw to Fuhr behind the net. He gets it out and down the ice. 40 seconds to go in the minor penalty, under 8.30 to go in regulation. If we have overtime, it's three on three. If we don't have a winner, we go to a shootout. Peter Kukal dumps it in. Puck comes to Artem Garayev, who scored on the power play to make it a 3-2 game. Garayev, back to the point. It goes through everybody and by Shitov and down the ice. High risk pass right there. There's no reason to try that. Puck was on, they had no pressure down low, hold on to it, but instead that high risk pass, difficult for Garayev to handle, excuse me, Shitov to handle on the Yekaterinburg blue line. Under eight minutes to go in the period. Here comes Yekaterinburg, centering feed there by Shitov was broken up. Comes back to the point, there's a shot, pad save on the blast by Timoshov by Elvis Merzlikens. Lugano killing the penalty as Wilson falling and kicks the puck, losing his stick. Keeping it in on the far side is Timoshov. Oh, and what a check! What a check there by Ryan Wilson. Wilson almost leaving Timoshov for dead right there with that big body check with under seven to play. And that's exactly the spark I think Lugano needs. You can see the energy is deflated from them since the second goal from Yekaterinburg, but Ryan Wilson delivering a bolt of energy with that big check on number seven to Nikolai Timoshov. Here comes Golashev, his shot is stopped, bounces to Buktel, and it's smartly cleared down the ice. Will it have enough for icing? No icing on the play. As Lugano changes on the fly, we're under seven to go in a thrilling 3-2 game here at the Spengler Cup. Golashev feeds to the far side for Rock to Carr, and it's feathered out to center ice where Golashev shoots it right back in again. Looks like Lugano is playing the puck like a grenade a bit, Doug. Yeah, they're overhandling it, particularly this line, Martinson and Kleinitz, Linus Klaassen, excuse me, the two sweets. Here's a chance in front, oh my goodness, BC with a chance to end it and make it four to two. A terrible giveaway right there by Jan Buktel. Terrible pass by Buktel right there. Ended up right on VC stick. Looked like he had the game winner on his blade. Puck comes to VC. The quick up here to Steve Hershey with a shot. Easily gloved by Vladimir Sikatsky. And he will hang on. 6.15 to go in a 3-2 game. And look at the giveaway coming right here. The puck comes right back here to Claussen. VC's in front of it. It was perfect. It was laid out from right-handed shot coming off the right-hand side. That looked like the game winner on his blade. And there is that hit by Wilson, who's been outstanding for Lugano, the ex-Colorado Avalanche laying out Nikolai Timoshov. You could tell Timoshov was not expecting it. And immediately after that hit, it seemed like a little bit of a jolt of energy into this Lugano lineup. They'll have to do that face-off all over again. The puck was not dropped fairly, so it remains a 3-2 game. Ryan Wilson played with St. Mike's and Sarnia in the OHL. Here's another look at the face-off. And you can see the linesman right away blew the play dead. So they're going to put the time back on the clock, which I think is only one second. Second's too fast. I want to make it fair. That's the only thing I'm trying to do. One second's too much. It goes right for the stick. Not even a second. In fact, I'm listening to them in Germany. They're saying less than one second, in fact. Oh, I didn't know you spoke German as well. German, English, French. Any other talents? Poco Italiano. And Italian. As we approach the 14-minute mark of game one of the 2016 Spengler Cup, the 90th edition. We're at the Valant Arena, sold out for this one, and it'll be sold out tonight as the whistle goes in front of Vladimir Sikatsky. Canada will take on Minsk in the second game. 11 games in five and a half days to determine a Spengler Cup champion.
Face off to the left of Vladimir Sikatsky, who has not allowed a goal here in relief of Ivan Lesutin, who gave up all three goals in the hockey game and was pulled at three to one. Sikatsky makes an easy save right there on the Alessandro Shiza shot. And with 5.46 to go, it's a 3-2 game. Three points for a regulation win. That's why regulation wins matter more than overtime or shootout sessions, Doug. Face off controlled by Tony Martinson gets it to Linus Klassen. And then the whistle goes. And the referee outside the blue line is going to call a slashing penalty. I don't know where it happened, Doug, and who it happened to, but slashing will be the call. It looks like it's going to be Igor Zur Laviov going off for Ekaterinburg. A strange call because all it was was a little bit of pushing and shoving in the, in the face-off area. So Kaif got a slash right there on, we're not going to see the highlight on Lin Linus Klassen, unfortunately for him and for Yekaterinburg. And here is right in front, you're going to see the slash right here. The top of the circle right there, right in front of the ref. A strange play to make with just five minutes to go in the game, down by one, face off your own zone. A really boneheaded play by the veteran Yekaterinburg defenseman. A good play there by Nikita Sheetoff to get it out and down the ice. So power play for Lugano. And here's Tony Martinson. Starting up, gets it back to Wisniewski to Linus Klassen, who's been on the ice, I think, more than anybody else. Tony Martinson, the 36-year-old, former Anaheim Duck in 2003-2004. Getting things going here. Far side, in front, Beastie with a shot, blocked in front, the ricocheted, and I believe hit the defender in the face. That may have been Mikhail Kukowski as he heads off, or Shitov. Nonetheless, no damage done as they do get the puck out. This is a tricky situation. When you're up by one end of the game, you have a tendency not to push the power play the same way you do at different junctures of the game, and I see that from Lugano. Giveaway ends up on the stick of VC to Klassen in front of the net. Looking for Martinson, it was broken up, and here's a chance. Yeah, Katarinburg shorthanded on a two-on-one. Takar waiting, Takar, what a save by Elvis Merzlikens on a two-on-one, and he had Alexei Simakov with him. Look at Simakov, he wanted the puck right there. Absolutely, absolutely, you called that one, you nailed it. That's a situation where the head's gotta be coming up. Look, wide open, we saw it earlier on, it's the weak side, the pass was there, the lane was there, that was a tap-in to tie this game short-handed. But moments earlier, I mentioned it, Lugano not being consequent, sloppy begin this power play. No speed. How important is entering the zone while they're doing it standing yep. still? It's allowed twice here. The first minute of the power play allowed the Academy twice to win the puck in their own zone in transition. This time easily could have resulted in the tying goal. Simikov and Takara played well in the game and they almost had an opportunity right there. They did in fact to tie it shorthanded and that would have been a huge blow to Doug Shedden's team considering they were up three to one. Still on the power play. Controlled by Stefan Almer. His pass is too far. Looking for Zacherson, who has not had the offensive chances we've expected so far. Puck bounces over the line as Almer was there and he couldn't keep it in as he's being watched by Torchenyuk. And the ice is sloppy. Far too much snow on the ice right now. You see so many pucks bouncing. Really difficult to connect with passes as well. Nikolai Timoshov gets the puck, gets it down the ice. The quick up here for Gregory Hoffman, nice play by Merz Lickens. Yet Katarinberg wanted icing on the play, they don't get it. And bringing it back the other way is Artem Garayev. One on one, through the legs like Ovechkin, but not biting on the play was Alessandro Chiesa as he was strong on Garayev, who's very dangerous one on one. Yeah, that was a really sweet move by Garayev. I like the fact that he challenged Chiesa like that. That's what I was expecting to see more from this talented group of Yekaterinburg forwards. The penalty is over, back comes Mikanov. Gets it in front, spinning to Kukal. Oh, what a save by Elvis Merzlikens as Peter Kukal with a great opportunity there as Elvis has had to make not one but two big third period saves. Yeah, he's made in two consecutive shifts two outstanding saves that have kept Lugano in the lead, but Lugano's not skating. They're sloppy, not only going with four with the puck, but that was a terrible back check right there that allowed Kukal that point blank shot in the slot. Under three minutes to go. In period number three, in regulation time, Vasiliev gets it to the near side for Brian Wilson. 
Plays it to Martinson. Anatoly Goloshev getting some ice time here as he broke up the play momentarily, then heads to the bench. Here's Rock Takar in over the line. He's looking for Shasalin, who goes in after it. Three blue sweaters with two white sweaters along the boards, and Doug Shedden will allow the clock to tick away. Every second matters right now. Puck is controlled momentarily by Lugano. It was Klassen. And finally, Elvis Merz-Lickens hangs on to that one. How would yeah. you have liked okay. to see that play develop from a coaching perspective? Well, I didn't, I didn't, first of all, I didn't like the positioning. And here's a great save right here on Kukal. Oh. Merz-Lickens, look at him. This guy is dialed in. Look at that backhand pass right here. And Kukal takes it coming in. This is what you want, a left-hander coming off the right-hand side. The puck just laying for him. A look out quickly. Merz-Lickens came across, got the big pad to make that save. I don't like the defensive positioning from the Lugano on the last year, particularly the Swedes. They need to be in a defensive posture, but instead they're looking for an opportunity to get away from the play, i.e. the puck is one out to them. They turn what should be just a pure defensive situation into an offensive one. Dmitry Megalinski takes it in deep, loses it to Walker, and after it is Shisalin against Walker. Two minutes to go. When do you think yeah, Katarinburg will pull their goalie. Traditionally, Russian teams have waited longer than we do in North America. Right, I would have considered pulling it on the last face-off. I've looked at the bench, there's been no indication whatsoever coming from the Katarinburg bench to their goaltender as to get him ready to come out of the goal. Nice play there by Raphael Sanitz to get it to Max Lapierre. He goes to the bench. Sanitz gets it in deep. As we have 90 seconds to go in regulation time. Sanitz. One of the goal scorers for Doug Shedden's team gets it in. Mikhail Kokoski has it now. Arm in the air for Vladimir Sakatsky. He wants to come off. Puck is controlled here by Stanislav Chistov. Back to Sakatsky. Gets it over to Alexei Simikov. Number 14 starting behind his own net as we approach the 19 minute mark. Here's Mikhail Kokoski in over the line. Sakatsky goes to the bench. Six attackers for Yak Hederinberg. Chistov, blind feed, gives it away to Dario Burglar who gets it out. 50 seconds to go in regulation time. Back comes Kukal, fires it in. It goes off Fuhrer and into the corner. Gubin with it now, being watched by Shiza. Gets it back to the line but not out. Kakovsky shot, blocked there nicely by Pat Sakrasin. Just under 36 seconds to go, 3-2, Lugano is hanging on. And that's what you want from your leadership, your veteran leadership crew. And there's Patrick Zakerson getting in front of Zhukovsky. Zhukovsky, heavy shot from the Katarinburg blue and by Zakerson, putting his body on the wrist to make that block, allowing now Lugano to call a timeout, regroup and get the guys they want on the ice here to end this game. Is there anybody off the top of your head that you say, you know what, for Doug Shedden, I need blank to take this draw? Well, number one, I want Max Lapierre out there. Okay. I think he's been their best defensive forward. He's good in the face-off circle. He's played in these situations before. So I'm looking to him. I want Ryan Gardner potentially on the face-off. I like Big Sanitz, who I think has been outstanding as well. I want the guys that are willing to put their bodies on the line, to get the pucks out, that are good defensively, and that are smart hockey players. These are the guys that I want, and I'm probably looking right now at Wilson and Chiesa to finish the game on the Lugano blue line. Officially 35.8 seconds to go, and what a way to open this tournament, Doug. Yeah, Katarinberg in white, trailing 3-2 to two to Lugano. Artem Gurayev with a power play goal, and that was 15. Goloshev, who almost had the game tied with his feed to Kukal moments ago. So all hands on deck, face off to the right of Elvis Merz-Lickens. Controlled by Lugano. Vasiliev gets it out and down the ice. It will go for icing as it just went wide of the far side. So with 28.5 seconds to go, we will do it all over again. And the face off, Lugano did an excellent job right there. We talked about it, it was Max Slap here in the draw. Got the puck back to Wisniewski. Wisniewski just a little bit too strong on his clear out of the zone, but it's important what he's thinking right there. So I'm gonna use the glass and I'm gonna make sure that that puck gets out. Lapierre on the faceoff against Torchenyuk. Torchenyuk wins it, the whistle goes, and they say jumping in early was Alex Mikanov, the 34-year-old from Kiev, and that's no good because that would have been control, as we see right here, for Yakaterinburg. 
And you watch right there, a nice job by Rock Takar winning the draw. Puck in the skates, the puck came back. Face off controlled by Yaketa Rinberg, but here's Klassen two on one with the empty net. Gets it to Lapierre to Klassen who scores! And that'll do it. Line is Klassen into the empty net. Lugano will win this one. They're up now four to two. And you said we've seemed like Klassen's been out there the entire game. Seems appropriate that he puts a nail in the coffin of Yekaterinburg. Nice little passing play right here with the empty net. LaPierre, who's playing outstanding, I thought, this afternoon for Lugano, unselfishly throws it over to Klassen. Puts it into the empty net for Lugano's fourth, but a real good job there with the goaltender pulled. I really like the discipline Lugano showed. I thought Martin did a nice job of getting the puck out of the zone, and then the two on one between Lapierre and Kleinis. No mistake whatsoever. Kleinis Klassen, 10 goals and 36 points during the regular season. 32 years of age from Stockholm. A 200 foot player, as we say. His third year with Lugano. And he played in the NHL with Nashville back in 2010-2011. The Lugano fans will go home happy as they get three points for a 4-2 victory. And Elvis Merzlikens, more importantly, looks like Elvis Merzlikens from a year ago. If there's one thing that Lugano needed before the game, and that was for Merzlikens to find the form that he displayed in the tournament last year. If you're Doug Shedden, you're leaving this game going, oh, thank God, our number one goaltender is back again. 4-2, the final score in favor of Lugano. Elvis Merzlikens, Luka Fazzini, Artem Garayev, the game stars. Tonight, Team Canada against Minsk, as Canada will try to make it back-to-back -back Spengler Cup championships. Now back to Vic Router. Lugano wins 4-2. Vic. Okay, boys, we'll see you uh, downstairs. Check one, two. Do you think, uh, here's what I would say. Are you playing? Good evening. 